Okay, so let's have a little look at this question here. You know, this is a, a question that is potentially going to come up in your paper one, uh, looking at the hazards. And you know, we moved away with the new specification from that simple kind of describe or explain the impacts to wanting you to be able to analyse, interpret, or make judgments. So we've got this question here: To what extent are short-term responses more important than long-term responses to tropical storms? Really nasty question in one way. You know, to start trying to make a judgment about whether or not it's more important to focus on short-term or long-term responses is a really difficult thing to do. And actually, I think for a lot of geographers, it's a kind of redundant question. But the good thing about that, it does mean that the choice is up to you. There is no wrong or right answer to this question in terms of which side of the argument you come down on. So that's the first thing we need to consider, the command word. Okay, and the command word here is to what extent? You know, to what extent comes kind of in the similar sort of terms as discuss, uh, assess. Okay, so we're going to be looking at trying to give both sides of the argument. Now, what we like to do at Darrington is we do a B, B, C argument. Both sides blended and a conclusion. The both sides argument here is going to be that yes, long short term responses are more, more important than long term responses, and no, long term responses are actually more important than short term. And then the conclusion is obviously going to be your opinion. The blended element means that they basically uh, come together rather than doing one whole paragraph on the fact that short term responses are more important, okay, and then one paragraph on long term responses. We try and kind of mix them together and we switch from arguments. Okay. Then what we're going to be looking at is actually what is the question asking us about. Tropical storms, okay, is important here. And you're going to lose marks if you start talking about responses to things like uh, earthquakes or volcanic eruptions. Now, the question doesn't ask specifically for us to use a case study, but we know in geography that whenever we get the opportunity, particularly in our six and nine mark questions, we should definitely be trying to use it. Okay, and we use Hurricane Sandy. So immediately with that, I'm starting to think, what were some of the short-term and long-term responses? So short-term things, for example, if you remember, the New Jersey government provided $5.6 billion in, uh, in aid. That provided things like clean and safe drinking water and emergency shelter and accommodation. Combined with that, we had the Red Cross that put 75,000 people into that temporary accommodation. Long-term responses included a big advertising campaign to prevent the reduction of tourism, and actually it resulted in a 1% increase in tourism. Uh, we saw things like tax relief being given to people who'd lost their businesses and homes, and we saw things, for example, like the pier being rebuilt with its attractions, like the Ferris wheel and roller coaster. You know, all of these things, you know, all valid uh, sort of examples we can use of short and long-term responses. Now, the next thing we want to look for is what I like to refer to as signposting words. These are words that are in the question that we're going to use regularly or try and refer back to to structure our answer. So, obviously, short term and long term are going to be those. Okay, But also, I think this phrase of important. Okay, So, we call that a signposting word. That's a word we're going to want to use, or, or some kind of derivative of it. So, you know, important, importantly, and so on. So, we've got this idea of to what extent. We know that we're going to have to be considering both sides of the argument. So, immediately in being given this question, I'm starting to consider what kind of sentence starters and phrases I can use to show the examiner that I am going to consider the both sides of the argument. That's the first thing we want to do. So, we might want to start off with something along the lines of, you know, both of these responses are important. And then that allows us to start going in to talking about actually okay, how you're going to argue that both are responsible. And then obviously at the end you're going to have that idea of, you know, in conclusion. And then you're going to give your opinion. So what I've actually done now is I've kind of mocked up a, uh, an answer to this and we're going to just kind of read through it and show how the thinking behind it and how we decided to structure it. 
So let's look at the uh, the first paragraph here. That starter sentence, thinking back to how I was trying to structure my answer at the start. Okay, I've started off with a simple sentence. Both primary and secondary responses are important when we respond into a tropical storm. It shows the examiner that I'm going to consider both sides of the argument. And more importantly, I've used that word important, which shows the examiner that I've read the question and I'm going to try and ensure my answer refers to that. Both primary and secondary responses are important when responding to a tropical storm. For example, following Hurricane Sandy, I've now used an example. Okay. The government of New Jersey provided essential short-term relief. Now, essential is not important, but is basically uh, the same kind of word. It's got the same meaning. So therefore, you know, we've used that signposting word. We've said it's essential, important, short-term relief. At a total cost of $5.9 billion. Now, if you think back to earlier i said it was 5.6 i've actually done that on purpose in this question here because what i want to point out to you is that the examiner is not going to be sitting there worrying about you being 0.3 billion dollars out you've used what sounds like a realistic figure so don't sit there going i can't remember the exact figure if you've got someone in the right number if you know for example they provided housing for 75 or 80 thousand people one of those two numbers will do it sounds respectable it sounds correct so they provided essential short-term relief to provide emergency medical care and bottled water. This response was incredibly important. Look, there's that signposting word again. As it ensured that the death toll was minimised by providing the injured with appropriate health care and also prevented the spread of waterborne diseases such as cholera. I've clearly therefore explained why that response was important. I haven't just kind of left that up to the examiner to assume. You've got to know that the examiner is not allowed to imagine what you were thinking at the time. However, such responses by definition are short term and were only designed to deal with the immediate aftermath of problems created by the storm. That, however, there is important. It's that connective that shows the examiner that I'm going to be kind of considering both sides of the argument. Long term responses were required to ensure that those who lost loved ones or were badly injured had sufficient support to deal with secondary impacts such as post traumatic stress disorder. I've given a clear argument as to why secondary response was equally important, okay, if not more so. And I've actually referred it to a secondary impact, and I've made that very, very clear there. Moving to the second paragraph then. Returning to the importance of short-term responses, again, I've got that signposting word, and I've got now that blended sort of statement or structure to our answer. I've talked about a short-term response, then a long-term response, and now I'm returning to the short-term response. This isn't a major thing, but it does show a little bit of better structure than trying to just do a massive paragraph on short-term responses and long-term responses. The Red Cross provided emergency shelter to 75,000 victims of Hurricane Sandy. Importantly, oh look, there's that signposting word again showing the examiner that I am thinking about the question that's been asked of me, ensuring that these people had somewhere safe to seek shelter from the ongoing storm and its after effects, while their homes were assessed for damage to deem if they were safe for people to return to. Had this emergency shelter not been provided, the death toll may be much higher. I've again made it very clear as to why that short-term response was important. At the moment, though, I haven't really appeared to give my own opinion yet. I'm kind of sitting on the fence. While the long-term responses may not deal with the immediate risk to people posed by the storm, they are still highly important. But I'm making it very clear that while I'm arguing for the importance of short-term responses, I haven't discounted the importance of secondary ones. For example, Hurricane Sandy caused great damage to New Jersey's tourist attractions, such as Seaside's 100-year-old pier and Fun Fair, which it was feared would cause local businesses, such as hotels and restaurants, to lose income. It was highly important... Hmm? There's that signposting word again. For these business owners, that the New Jersey government invested highly in a new advertising scheme to encourage visitors back to the area following Sandy, which in fact resulted in a 1% increase in tourist income. There's some specific examples to back up my point. For these stakeholders, always better to use terms like stakeholders or residents rather than words like people. It's likely that the secondary responses were more important than the primary ones. Again, more important that term is in the question. It's that signposting term. Likewise, the fact that people whose homes have been damaged were given tax relief to support them in financing their repairs again shows the potential importance of long-term responses in allowing an area to recover from the impacts of a tropical storm. 
So final paragraph, and this is where we kind of carry on with that BBC structure. So we've given both sides of the argument in equal weighting. There hasn't been really any bias towards either one. And we've clearly tried to blend the argument, jumping from the importance of short term back to the importance of long term, back to the importance of short term, and then again, returning to the importance of long term. Now, as I said, it doesn't matter which way you go with this. However, I think as a geographer, it's easier to argue that long term responses in the same way that long-term impacts have more impact or more importance than short-term impacts. You know, short-term, by its definition, won't last for a long time. So though they can be very devastating, they are normally dealt with or finished with very, very quickly. Whereas long-term impacts and long-term responses may be vital in terms of how well that area will recover from the natural disaster. So I've decided to go with that. And in conclusion, I believe that long-term responses are more important than short-term responses. I've clearly given my opinion here based on quite a well-balanced argument at the start, only because they ensure that an area can return to normal. Short-term responses are important in minimising the immediate risk to residents hit by a tropical storm, but without effective long-term responses, the area is unlikely to fully recover. I haven't really given anything new information here, but I have clearly justified my opinion on the, on the importance of primary and short-term. Now, this is a perfect answer. You've got to remember in the exam, you're not going to have a huge amount of time. And the examiner is not looking for perfection. But if you can show that really clear understanding of the need to assess the importance of both short-term and long-term responses, you explain why short-term responses and why long-term responses are important. And then you give your conclusion, saying which one you feel is more important, that is going to put you in the right direction for a really high grade and allow you to access that level three seven to nine marks.